Imagine a town wherein the whispers never ended, their shadows holding secrets too dark to speak of. Welcome to Gravesand, wherein the vanishing isn't a legend but a curse. When siblings Devin and Cece happen upon a mirror reflecting the souls of those long lost, they soon learn the missing aren't gone, but simply waiting. With every step they make, it's across the line between those who will live and those who will disappear. Will they remain free that way, or will they become a part of the horror? Let's go! Goosebumps! The vanishing commences. The wind whipped down the hollowed streets of Gravesend, Brooklyn, like some sort of whisper, mumbling secrets long since buried. I could feel something there, unseen, bearing its weight upon me, the feel of an invisible hand that had closed over my spine. Goosebumps prickled across my arms, but this wasn't the chill of cold breeze, no. This was something more. Something was watching. CC and I were sent here for the summer and escape somehow morphed into a living nightmare. The groaning old house in which we stayed creaked with each catch of wind, the wood complaining with every puff of wind. You feel that? I whispered to Cece, but she just stared at the floor, silent. She felt it too, that unnerving stillness seeming to settle over the place since we'd arrived. But it wasn't the house either. There was something wrong with this whole town. Speaking in hushed tones since the vanishing incident back in 1994, avoiding places like they were cursed. And maybe it was every night i hear whispers faint and fleeing echoing through the walls tonight those whispers got loud the moment the clock struck midnight a low humming noise vibrated the air rat-a-tatting windows cc and i froze in place her eyes not leaving mine as if to speak more with her silence than words could we're not alone my heart beat hard in my chest with life pulse upon pulse louder than the last. I went to the window and, turning the stiff rod, coaxed the curtains open and peered out. Outside, the street was empty, gleaming in the milk glass light of the street lamps, but something was off, a shadow that shouldn't be, sliding along the full length of the street. My heart caught, it was coming this way, no footsteps, no sound at all, just a darker form floating closer. What is that? Cece was saying, her shaking voice barely audible. I don't know, but it's coming right for us. Then it vanished into thin air. Not into the night, but like it never existed at all. I blinked hard, eyes rubbing with closed fists. No freaking way this just happened. But before any word could leave my lips, whispers resumed this time loud and more demanding. Leave before it's too late. Words cold as vermin sailed through the air crawling in my ears, into my head, into my very soul. My legs were blocks of frozen terror. Cece dug her fingernails deep into my arm. We need to get out of here. Now! It was then, as I turned to make my run, that the door to our room burst open with a deafening bang. Cold air rushed in, and it was then that I saw in the doorway the shadow from outside, looming, its form twisting unnaturally. My throat thickened with the darkness that seeped in, wrapping around us like an alive thing. The whispers had turned into laughter now, cruel and jeering. Then it clicked. Not some kind of ghost story, but a goosebumps. The vanishing kind of ghost story, it was our turn for the town's curse. The shadow twisted and contorted, threatening to spill through the doorway like some weird specter. Almost human, yet in the way it moved jerky, as if pulled by some invisible strings another thing altogether. I could hardly breathe as it took another step closer, the boards beneath its weight creaking. Sese's fingers dug deeper into my arm, her eyes wide with terror. Well, what does it want? Laughter louder filled the room, but no mouth moved. It was in our minds, churning and ravenous. We shouldn't have come here, I choked out. Every sense shrieked at me to turn and run, but my feet seemed to have stuck to the floor. The figure raised its hand impossibly long, its digits curled like the branches of a dead tree, and it pointed directly at me. You're next. Everything went black that instant. Not the room, but the world. 
The giggle stopped, and in its stead, the silence was thick as it leaned against my chest. Then, in that exact tempo, the world just snapped right back into focus again. We were no longer in our room. Instead, we were outside in some open field. Above, the sky was an unnatural deep red color. Far, far away, through the haze, I could vaguely make out the outlined silhouetted shape of four figures. Immediately my blood ran cold, as my mind realized who they were the teenagers, the ones that disappeared all those years ago. But they weren't teens anymore. They were different. Their faces were blank, their eyes empty, their bodies crooked at impossible angles, like they jammed in the void too long. And then they walked towards us. This isn't real, Cece whispered, shaking. It can't be real, but it was, and there wasn't a way out. Those figures out there, those twisted shadows of the missing teens, continued their unnatural slow march towards us. I heard my heart loud in my ears while Cece reached for my wrist, digging her nails into my skin. What do we do? She gasped out, her eyes wide with terror. I said nothing. The air around us began to chill. Weighing heavy, even the air between them pulled in tighter, like we were standing over the top of some chasm, ready to swallow us whole at any moment. In an instant, one of them stopped, his pointing gesture directed at me. You should not have come, it hissed. The voice was dead and cold, an empty echo of anything human. The earth bucked and kicked around us, the cracks in it starting to web their way outward. I wanted to push Cece behind me, but we were frozen, stuck in place as if the land itself was clenching and holding. They stopped now abruptly mere feet away, their blank eyes, as dead and empty as the corpses they once had been, bored into us. Then one opened its mouth the one closest to me, but nothing came out of it. Instead, the world around us began to contort, bending and warping like some grotesque dream. I sat up and rubbed my eyes, trying to wring the fogginess from my head, as if that would help me catch up on the unfolding horror before me. Then, in another instant, it seemed we went from standing in that damned field back into the house. Of course, something was not right, the walls were too tall, the angles too sharp. It felt like we'd stepped into some nightmare version of our reality. We gotta get out of here, I said, but even as I was uttering the words, I knew it was already too late. Trap caught in goosebumps, the vanishing just like all those others before us. The door slammed shut behind, and with that, the whispers returned. You're next, hissing. This time, I believe them. The whispers closed in around us, the swirl of a thousand voices trapped in the walls. And then it would seem reality would bend and twist once more, this room extending and contorting beneath some unseen force. Cece was shaking, her eyes darting here and there, as if she might find a way out. But there wasn't one. The door creaked open, a second of silence, like before the hurricane starts. Then it stepped inside, not the shadow from before this time, but something much worse. Blurred, its form was both human and indescribable, a terrible melding of nightmares. Quite literally, my legs went to jelly and fear pinned me to the spot. Cece tugged on my hand and yanked me back. Run, she whispered. We thundered down the hall, the walls groaning and warping, it was as if the house itself were alive. At every step, air grew thick as if we were running through water. Whispers chased after us, growing louder, angry. We slid to a stop at the end of the hall, the front door right there just feet away, but so was the thing. Its body reached across the entrance, grotesque limbs outstretched, blocking our only escape. We're trapped, Cece cried, backing up against the wall. My mind raced. There had to be another way out. My eyes went to the stairs leading up to the attic upstairs, a place our father had forbidden us ever to enter. At that particular moment, however, it was as if it were our only hope. This way, I yelled, tugging at Cece back towards the stairway. We thundered up the groaning wooden stairs, the dark figure below twisting and writhing in its attempt to follow. Up above, the door to the attic loomed, I yanked it open with a sharp pull. It was inside, simply thick with the dust of ages and the darkness of long abandonment. Pieces of long-forgotten furniture lay around it, 
Their forms also shrouded in sheets ghosts caught in time. But across the room on the far side, something entirely different sat. A mirror. It was tall, almost touching the ceiling, and it had carvings etched into the frame of it. But the reflection which it cast wasn't ours. No, those missing teens, those who had vanished all those years ago, stared back at us wide-eyed, pleading, as if begging to be let out. What, what is this? Cece whispered, shaking, and before I could answer, the glass began to ripple, just like water when a stone is tossed into its face. And then, one by one, the figures stepped out of it. They emerged from the mirror, hollow eyes fixed on us. From the way they moved not quite, not right marionettes with jerky limbs twisting in spasm in their movement that brought them closer Cece tugged on my arm to pull me backward. This can't be happening, she said, her voice shaking. But it was, and there was no way out. It was as if the attic itself groaned under their weight as they approached. I could feel the chill off them, cold as death itself. Goosebumps, the vanishing, I thought sourly. We were only the latest victims, and soon we'd be gone too.